Hello class, um, welcome to 8th grade, welcome to Geometry. I'm Mrs. Greaser and I am so sorry that I am not here with you today on the first day of school. Uh, I am at George Mason University and I'm helping my son move into his dorm for uh, the beginning of his college experience, which in not too long we will be doing the same thing at the University of your choice. Um, I'm standing by the statue of George Mason here. Um, and if you know your Virginia history, you know how important he was to the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth. Uh, they say it is good luck to rub the toe of George Mason. And I wish you all good luck uh, this year. So I'm going to rub his toe on behalf of all of us. See you guys next class. So unfortunately, we do have to go over some things that are always going over in the beginning of a class. Um, you've been in school long enough that I think you know most of this stuff, but it is worth repeating. Um, and so please just give me a few moments to explain some of the rules and important things that have to do with this class. If you don't already have the um, materials handout, if you could pause the video and uh, get that distributed now. And please keep that close by as we go through this video. It really is just going through everything that's on there. First, let's talk about things I would like you to have for this class. One of them is a three ring binder and of course loose leaf paper for this binder. You will need a two inch binder. We do a lot of work with handouts and things that you're going to want to save and the loose leaf paper is really important. From time to time I'm going to ask you to take some out. I want you to have it. If you run out please refill as needed. It is really important to have those two things every class. I'd also like you to get some dividers for your three ring binder to help you stay organized. These should be labeled uh, like this. You want one section for all the class notes, another section for all the homework assignments, um, another one for quizzes, tests, anything that is graded, and then your last section should be called miscellaneous. If that's too big a word, just write the word other things that don't really fit into other categories, but things you want to keep. And I hate that I even have to mention it, but please bring pencils or pens. I don't mind if you use pens as long as they're not red, but something to write with. You will need it every single class. If you are unprepared, I only have a limited number of pencils because people take them and never return them and it is disruptive. So please, please just have a whole bunch of pencils in your pencil case. Um, if you could have a few that are even mechanical because my pencil sharpener sometimes doesn't work, be prepared. Let's not let that be the thing that makes it hard to get class going. You will need a compass and I put a picture here of a compass in case you don't know what that is. Um, this helps you make arcs and circles and things. Now you don't need that right away. I, I believe it's unit two. It's early on in the year. We'll be, we'll, we'll be needing it. I have a few. They are older than you are. They don't work. They are frustrating. Um, please, if you haven't gotten a compass, make sure you have one by the time we get that unit. They're, they're usually not very expensive and you don't need an expensive set. Uh, so please get one of those. As far as protractors, which is uh, shown here, uh, next to the compass. That's optional. We mostly use protractors for its straight edge and so you will need something with a straight edge. Either a ruler, a protractor, you can even fold a piece of paper in half or use the side of a binder. Um, so if you want a protractor, great, but it is not a hard requirement. As far as optional things, some people really like to have highlighters when we're taking notes to highlight what they uh, feel is important or, you know, underlining is okay too. Uh, graph paper, some people like having that, and, and I think of those as purely optional. Some people like having those things. Some people don't need them. Um, I'm not going to say you must get one. Now, a graphing calculator, um, it is optional only because it is kind of an expensive item, so I don't want to require anybody to have to go out and, get, and buy one. However, it is extremely useful if you have your own version of this. And uh, the, the type of calculator you would need is a Texas Instruments or TI. 83 or 84 and there are various models uh, some more expensive than others um, but the TI-83 which is this plain black calculator you can get them on eBay or other sources for relatively inexpensive amount of money and that will get you through um, high school pretty much so it wouldn't just be for this year uh, I recommend it so if it is something you can do fantastic I do have a class set 
I don't have a complete class set because some of them break and we don't always get replacements for them. So if it is a possible thing for you to get, it will help you when you have to do your homework and if you're working during resource, because I don't let my calculators outside of the classroom, um, it, it's recommended. So um, I wouldn't get one to break the bank, but um, a used one should be fine. My next category of things are my, my pretty please, if you can. These are to be used as a classroom resource for other people. Um, tissues are a big deal. A lot of people have allergies or get colds or sniffly noses. I run out of them. I go at, at least one box a week, sometimes more during allergy or cold seasons. Please, if you can, um, ask your parents if, if they can send in a box of tissues, and I may need more as the year goes on. The same is true with the extra pencils. I already made a plea for you to bring pencils, but of course, sometimes we forget these things. Um, it is very, very helpful to me to have a box of pencils, and they disappear very quickly, and I would greatly appreciate anybody who's willing to donate a box of pencils um, and or tissues. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now for more of the unpleasant stuff that we tend to tune out on, which are class rules. And, and these are the usual. I'm asking you to please just pay attention for one moment. Um, it really will make this year go much more smoothly if we are all on the same page with this. Um, I do have an expectation that you will be on class on time. You will have your binder, your pencils, your notes, your homework, everything that you need with you. So please make sure you have all those things on time. I do have a very strong feeling that you will be respectful, honest, and um, tidy in your work area. Um, honesty is truly one of the more important things for me and respect. Um, you're not using your desk as a garbage can. You just have a little respect for the classroom for me and for other students. Um, you may not like my no food or gum rule. Uh, I have found gum in all kinds of terrible places, so it is a rule that I do not allow gum uh, to be chewed in the room. Food, um, I am very concerned about allergies and food intolerances that many students have, maybe not even in your class, but in others. And you could harm another student by being careless about food in the classroom. Please, no food in the classroom. And unless otherwise told, all cell phones need to go in the cell phone hanger that is near the classroom door at all times. Again, I may from time to time say, let's, let's do an activity, um, but cell phones may not be by your side during the class time unless I tell you so. Truly very important. I will give the cell phone to the dean if I find you using it at a time that you are not allowed to. Um, also, when that bell rings, you don't get up and leave. I will tell you when it is time to leave. If I need an extra 30 seconds, you just have to wait. You will still get where you need to go. Um, and my most important rule is that you are not disturbing anybody's learning, your own or anybody else's. And if you disturb my teaching, you are disturbing somebody else's learning. So I think we'll quickly come to learn what that means by disturbing other people's learning. But truly, I think you already know what that is. So um, let's make this a nice classroom environment for everybody. Attendance is extremely important. This is a high school level class. When you miss a class, you're missing 90 minutes of high school level instruction. So um, un unless you are uh, very sick or there is a religious observance or a family emergency, I really do expect you to be here. Um, if you are absent, I do keep my assignment calendar up to date and I do expect you to go there and look at that assignment calendar. I attach all relevant materials. Um, any notes that I give out, all handouts, homework assignment. There should be a video of the class lesson up there. I do expect you to watch that video and to attempt the homework and to come back prepared with very specific questions. So I have that expectation. If the absence is due to some reason where you're not able to, to get to that, please let me know. But generally speaking, you should be able to do that. Now, if you're absent on a test day, uh, be prepared to take it the day you get back, whether you have math or not. If that is a resource day for you, that is when you should come see me to take your test. Um, basically, I will give you that test either the next class or your next resource block, whichever comes first. If you're absent the day before a test, I have a, people come back and say, oh, I can't take the test today. I was absent last class. Um, you will have all the materials you need 
that before that day before the test. It's mostly a review study guide type day. So I do expect you to take a test if you are absent the class before the test. And sadly, there will be homework nearly every class. I think practice is really important in math. So it is always posted on the assignment calendar. If you are absent, that is not an excuse to not have your homework done. I do have that expectation. You are looking at the assignment calendar, getting the materials, watching videos, and attempting that homework. Um, I do find that students that do that are much less stressed after a homework, uh, after an absence, because they come in ready to go and they haven't missed anything pretty much. So please get in the habit of checking uh, that assignment calendar if you're ever unsure. Uh, I didn't know there was homework is also not an excuse. Now with the materials, I do post the answers to the homework, which does not mean that homework will now take three minutes to do or less because you have the answers. They are for checking. And this is a high school level class. The worst thing that would happen is you do 20 questions and you did them all incorrectly. So please check your answers each night. That is an expectation. I'm not going to give you time in class to check them. So you check them if you get one wrong and you still can't figure out why, that would be a question you would ask in class during homework check time. You must do this homework. It goes in the grade book. It goes under a formative grade. So it does affect your grade, but it is just for completeness. So if you want an easy bunch of points, do your homework. It is just that you did it, not that you necessarily have them all correct, because I don't expect you to have them all correct the first time that you start working on an assignment. Uh, word about tests. Several words about tests. Um, tests are what we call summative assignments, and these make up 90% of the grade here. Now, any test that I give you, you have one class period to complete it. So saying, oh, I didn't finish, I, I guess you're going to get those questions you didn't get to incorrect. The exception would be if we have some documented reason why you would get more time for a test. But generally speaking, you get that one class period, and they are designed to be completed in that time. You shouldn't have any trouble completing them in one class period if you've prepared for it. Now, as I mentioned before, if you are absent on a test day, be prepared to take it when you get back to school. Um, and which uh, it's either your resource block or the next class period, whichever comes first. Now, if in advance you know you're not gonna be here, please come see me ahead of time. Let's get that test taken before the absence. It'll make that absence much easier on you and uh, everything will be much better if you take responsibility for that absence and get that test done. Um, if you're absent before the test, again, that is not any excuse for postponing a test. I was absent the class before the test. I don't want to take it today. You knew about it. It will be given. So um, if there is a reason why you can't buy it, please come talk to me. If there was some kind of emergency and there is some reason valid reason why you couldn't do it talk to me ahead of time don't show up the day saying oh i can't take it um, be responsible about these things and um, you will be in a good place some other things as i've kind of mentioned in previous um, slides here um, everything is online i keep all the materials um, notes homework assignments, study guides, any other handouts that I'm giving you. Um, I do have videos of the different class lesson topics that you can watch. All these other resources, they're all going to be on the Google assignment calendar. They're also in Vision. I have links to all of these things on my classroom website. Um, it is an expectation that you are taking advantage of these resources. Um, if you have any trouble finding them or getting to them, please let me know. I want you to be able to feel comfortable with them. Another resource that I use is called Remind. So if you go to the first page of my website or if you look on uh, this hand that I gave you, what Remind is, is it's an opt-in texting system, meaning you don't get texts unless you ask to be on this Remind list. And I will put things in like a little text when there's a test coming up or an important assignment. Um, I don't see your phone number, so don't worry about that. It is a very nice little tool. So if you want to be on the Remind list, please go check it out on my um, website for directions on how to get to that. So that we've been talking a lot. I think the last thing we're going to talk about here is just Google Classroom. I will be using Google Classroom for assignments and to fill out the assignment calendar. Um, I do have the codes listed here. So look for your block number 
and then please jot down this code so that you have it. I don't know by the time you watch this video if they will be ready for you to sign into Google and join the classroom um, for the first couple of days or until they have a Google Classroom or the Google accounts ready for all students. I'll try to make sure that the calendars all have um, duplicate information that you won't need to actually go into classroom to see the assignment. Um, but until then, you um, can just look at the assignment calendar straight off my website. No problems there. But once they get Google going for you guys, uh, it will be through Classroom. So please make sure you join Google Classroom. I think that's enough for now. That was a whole lot of information. I know we're going to forget things now and then, and so we will have gentle reminders of all the procedures and processes and expectations. Don't hesitate to ask if you are unsure of, of how something is supposed to work. I'm happy to, to help you with that. Um, but if you also, it's recorded, so if you ever forget, you can always kind of rewatch bits and pieces of this video. But most of all, I really want us to have a fantastic year. I want you to love your math class this year, and, and I think we're going to have a great start as well as a great finish. So thanks again for your patience in watching and listening to this video, and let's get to the good stuff, the math.